live from Michigan City, Indiana. It's Long Arm TV Live with Jamie Wallen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary on this wonderful, beautiful day um, today. It's a Saturday, and the weather here is absolutely incredible. We're going to do a fairly short one because I know that this time of year, especially with everybody working in the garden, you don't like the big, long, drawn out. Now, today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually doing a cornerstone. Mr. Richie, you want to throw that up on the screen? And I am put going to do a little bit of a cornerstone, not this intense, but something a little more basic, but something similar to this. Okay, perfect. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to sign off. And then throughout the next week, I'm going to do um, a few more tutorials on what I'm doing on this piece. Now, the piece I'm working on right now is one of the quilts that was uh, won by one of our, we had, we had two quilts going out. We had one of them for uh, somebody, anybody who signed up for our uh, YouTube page. And then the other one was we put all of the um, names in a hat of anybody who placed orders up until, what was it, the, um, the, the first uh, of this month. And there you go. So sorry I'm stuttering. You know, I just had my, I just had the most amazing banana dessert thing with a lot of sugar. And it's the first sugar I've had in like six months. So I think I'm a little sugar stone. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, a few things coming up. Um, next week is going to be our last live for a few months because we're going into class season. So we're going to be doing that. But um, never fear, because we will have a bunch of new tutorials coming up, definitely at least once a week. It just won't be our typical live. Um, so there we go, just so you know. And then we'll start off um, again um, when it starts to be around after summer, a little bit towards fall, doing it again. And then now next week, it's going to be a very special week because we have a surprise special guest. So you'll want to check that out. And if you don't check it out live, make sure to check it out because we always post it afterwards. Rich does a cleanup, of course, as many of you know, and then you can check it out and watch it after the fact, which is very good. Um, and then also uh, a few things that I want to talk about a little bit is starting, I think, at the uh, beginning of next year, we're going to be doing some new things. We, by the end of this year, what I've decided that I'm going to be doing is um, I'm going to be doing complete quilts on film. And what I'm going to do is I'll probably put like the first part on YouTube and then the first part as well as all of the following parts as I walk through the quilt will be over at Patreon. I think that's where we're going to be doing that. And also what we have coming up is uh, at the beginning of next year, maybe even before then, but I, definitely by the beginning of next year, is we'll be doing some, um, some classes online so you can be in the comfort of your own home. Um, similar to the Zoom type classes, it might actually be the Zoom. We're still checking out all of the different options so that that way we can choose the right option for everybody. Um, and that's kind of what, because we know that um, uh, I think a lot of us have kind of gotten this whole taste of, oh, this is what being home feels like. And I think a lot of people like it. And I'll tell you something else, because I'm finding it for me. I am not tech savvy one bit, but this whole, uh, the, the horrible COVID, um, as well as all of the other things in the world, it really has made me isolate a lot. And I'm starting to get more tech savvy than I ever thought I would talking to my sister in Michigan um, through, um, what is that, FaceTime and those sorts of things. So I'm learning to use tech that I never thought I would be able to or want to learn how to use. So I think that um, for our generation, our 40 and over set, we're starting to learn all these things. And I think we're starting to like them. Um, because one of the things that I would say is that, yes, I love my shows. I'm, I, I'm always going to go to a few shows a year. Um, 
but it's just nice to to get in with your family. And I gotta tell you, it's nice being out in my yard again. You know, I haven't. I we've been so busy because we're on the road about thirty four weeks out of the year. We were not this year, but um, you know, it's it's just nice being home and it's nice being in the yard. I forgot that um, I've got to unbury my house from all of the stuff from our traveling. So it's just, it's kind of a nice thing, and I'm hearing that all over the United States and actually other countries as well as, wow, I forgot what being home is like. So keep those things in mind. Those are some things that we have coming. Of course, we'll still have a couple classes here in our studio a year so that you can come and do some specialty classes, but we are going to move a little bit more into the future just to kind of um, move into the future and not get left behind, which a lot of us, me, old timers, um, it would be easy to get left behind. So there we go. And it gives us a lot of options. And it touches on a lot. It, you, we reach a whole audience that we wouldn't normally reach um, because I don't know if you're aware of this, but I would say only about... 20% of the whole quilting community actually travels to shows. I was not aware of that. Um, but, um, and that's a small number when you consider, you know, how many, how many people we do actually see at shows. So, a lot, yeah, a lot of people like to be home. So those are kind of a few things coming up. Do you have any announcements you'd like to make, Mr. Ritchie? No? Get her done? All right. So um, we are working, we are cooking out tonight. So, and the dogs are home because, you know, it was pretty hot and we had a lot going on here. We had some friends, I don't know, um, David uh, Gilliland for, from uh, Georgia. Um, his uh, team came and picked up uh, one of our older trailers. And so uh, we had them in town and I had my first pizza since my heart attacks. So it was a splurge, but, and it was amazing. And I'm done, I'm done, done, done. But I gotta tell you, it was it was dangerous. Rich actually looked at me today and said, "Do you think we should do another pizza and just call it a weekend?" And it's like, "No, we're not going to do that." So, nonetheless, um, so it's it's been an interesting weekend. So we're going to go and we're going to do a little bit of cooking out because it is here perfect weather. I hope you're having nice weather wherever you're at. Um, so let's go down on the quilt. Well, stay here for a second, Rich. I'm sorry. Um, I've had a few of you ask, Jamie, what is that stuff hanging all over your machine? Well. It's a curtain uh, rod type of thing. And what I like to do with this is I've, I've I used to use yardsticks. Um, now I use these. And what I do, if you want to go to the side camera here, Mr. Ritchie, what I do is it goes up on my bars like this. And then that way I can move it in so that that way because I have my ruler base on, it keeps my, um, my uh, guys, my clamps here up and away so that that way when I come over and I'm quilting, especially when I don't leave myself enough backing or a client doesn't leave me enough backing, it just, it doesn't clank into those. Um, our Nova machines, we have our own bases which have the beveled edge, but on our handy quilter ones, I like to use this, that way it keeps it up and away from that edge so that it doesn't clunk when I'm in a, in, a, in a spot that I don't want it to do that while I'm quilting. So that's why I use that. And then I slide it this way if I need it up higher. I slide it this way if I need it lower. And it's just a nice way to deal with that. And then once I get off the corner, I can actually take it down and put it on the lower bar. Because what happens with at least all the machines I've ever run um, and owned is that when I didn't have something here underneath this, what would happen is this would hang low and I actually end up with a little bit of drag, you know, and of course if I don't have enough backing then it bumps against there. So this just kind of helps prevent that from happening. So that is why I use these and they're cheap. They're like a buck, buck fifty if you go to the dollar store has them or your hardware store. So that's what those guys are for. Okay. So, again, let's get our bearings here on this piece. So we've got our corner, which happens to be yellow. Um, both of our ladies that we're making these pieces for, to mail out for the winners, uh, both wanted jewel tones. So we're going to do some jewel tones, and it kind of bleeds from yellow into fuchsia, into purple, into green. 
Um, at least this one does. And then I have a nice purple hand dyed back. Um, and I have a uh, sateen on the top and I've got the shiny side up. So I've located a spot here. I don't know if you can see it. You can see that dot and I've used my blue marks be gone because what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw that picture up again. If you can, Mr. Ritchie, I'm sorry. Don't mean to throw that out of left field. Take a look at that uh, upper left hand corner and you can see that it's a circle and I put feathers on the inside just like a feathered wreath um, and then I did curve cross hatch in there. Um, well I need a place to center that circle and on this one, okay that's good. On this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two different size circles so that I have a little bit of a negative space in that circle here. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to grab my smallest circle. This is a nine and a half inch finished. I'm going to line that up and I've got the center of the circle right there. I'm going to put that right on the dot. I'm going to lock my stitches out in the binding line. Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna come out, and now I'm gonna come down, and I do want to remind everybody, I'm using rulers, which means what? I have a ruler foot and a ruler base. Sometimes I get lazy and I forget to remind people if you're using rulers, you need both of those things, but you need both of those things. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring this around Just to thicken that line a little bit, make it a little more bold. Lock my stitches, move this away. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to slide this over, and I'm going to go into needle down. There we go. Ta da! All right, now I'm going to grab my bigger circle. I'm going to put my bigger circle, same spot. So that's only going to give me a half inch bigger circle because this one is 10 inch finished and the other one was nine and a half inch finished. And I'm going to start here. I've got that perfectly lined up. And on the back of this circle ruler, I put a little bit of sticky stuff so that that way there's not going to be any shift as I'm working my way around. See, that's where that needle down comes in handy right there. Sorry about that. Do you get that, Mr. Ritchie? So I've got my needle down. I'm going to come around, come back. I want to thicken that line a little bit. That's going to give me a little bit of negative space. Okay, so that's good there. So now we have our double circle. All right, so now... Which camera is that? Is that that one? Yep, that's that one. So let's go to this camera over here if we can. Okay, so now let me move that down. You can see my little double valley to give myself that um, negative space. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some like a feathered wreath type of thing right around here. Now when I do that, I think what I want to do is, oops, and I forgot something, so stay right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a smaller circle and I just kind of want to get an idea of how far in I want to take my feather fronds for that wreath um, section. So I've got my little dot here. I'm going to drop this guy in there. And this is just a guide. I don't need to use it um, as a law, but I just kind of want to Put this little circle there, right up there. That way that's going to be kind of a nice area to put some inner feathers. And now you can kind of see that it'll still have a, a circular look to it. 
Now, on the one that I showed as an example at the beginning, if you want to pop that up again, Mr. Ritchie. <clears throat> if you look at that, you'll see that I offset the um, circle. I didn't put it in the dead center, and I kind of like that look as well. But this one I'm going to put in the dead center. You don't have to um, put that circle in the center as you see there where I do the feathers because you'll see that one side of the inside of that feathered wreathish shape uh, has longer feathers. Okay, so let's go back here. And uh, one side has shorter. But this one I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you an alternative. Now the reason, the other reason that I went ahead and I chalked this circle is I want to go ahead and pretend that I'm going to put this guy down. I am going to mark right on my batting, right off the edge, just a little registration line there because here's why. If I were feathering this as a feathered wreath, I would want to know the angle of my feather as I come around here. If I just start here and come straight out and start doing a feathered wreath, it's going to look odd. It's, it's not going to look natural, right? And so what I want to do is I kind of want to pretend draw a little bit like I'm, I might do my swirl back, bump the top, new frond. I'm going to go and do different sizes. Reach right up. So I'm doing different sizes here, back, bump, frond, back, bump, frond. Can you um, go in a little tighter on that one for me, Rich? There we go. So I'm just putting a few marks here, which I'll get rid of. And again, this line, I went over, who cares? It's still going to be gorgeous. Back, bump frond and then start small again you can make all different heights kind of add some interest or you could do a few that actually go the same size and then if you want to when you come down here go ahead and again it's a guide I don't need to hit these lines exactly because this blue mark is going to go away and I'm going to Go right down to this line that I made, just so I know how that feather would angle whoops, up in there, back. And then I'm going to come around here, and let me see that feather would angle there, because I want to make sure that I get some feathery looking guys so I know where those feathers would naturally land up around there, even though we're offset. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, and... Is my hand in the way, Mr. Ritchie, or am I safe? Do I need to move that guy? Okay. Okay, it looks good. Do this. I'm going to set my cruise speed. Going to go a little higher. No, I think that's absolutely perfect. That's not too close. Not in my opinion. I want him to see. Up, back, down, up, back. And now I can go ahead and start swinging around, bump the top, new frond, lay those against the previous because they're going to go from big to little. So now I start small, bump, frond, bigger, bump, biggest. And notice how I'm laying those feathers against the previous large feather there. Okay. So again, bump, boom. Frond, bump, boom, frond, start small again, bump, boom, frond, go bigger, fill it, bump, frond. Now I'll do a few that reach all the way out. Swing back, bump the top, new frond, now go small, bump, Frond, bump, frond, go small, bump, frond, throw in the last few tips. I'm going to go right up in here, and now I'm going to go ahead, bump, 
front, swing back, bump, front. That way the eye is going to pick up this corner. There we go. See, the eye is going to go ahead and pick up that corner once we get rid of the blue as complete. So now, the next thing I'm going to do, before I go in here and put in some curved crosshatch, just to kind of doctor that up and make it look a little more fancy, I want to go ahead and I simply want to thicken, not the whole feather frond, but simply the part that's in at the center. I want to inline it or outline the inside. So I'm going to... One, two, three, 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 and then I'm going to follow that in, and I'm simply just thickening that line so that when I do my curved cross hatch, you actually have almost like a semi frame. In, in, just the outer ones. I'm not going down the inside of the feather. I'm simply doing the inline around the inside of the reef. In, back, pop, 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 go up here, pull up my bobbin thread, snap, snap the, um, Snap, snap the um, knot through. No more sweets for me. All right, and then I'm gonna grab a straight ruler. And what I'm going to do is, and actually I'm gonna grab my designer. Now for this next part, what I wanna do, uh, as we're doing the curve cross hatch in there, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the designer because we're gonna need this later when we do the petals around the outside. Um, but right now I need to put my cross hatch in for for the curved cross hatch. And this is my A. This ruler is, has all the marks. A is the edge. B, C is 45. D, E. F, if you have the little designer drawing series, we have a tiny one. But also what we have is this wonderful Mystical Designer 2, which is large, and it actually goes FGH. So I can divide um, radiating lines throughout this whole thing. And it is a wonderful tool to use for designing. And you can mark it on the go. So now let's use this. And I'm going to go ahead and put my B. Now, you, as you know, if you've seen any of my other tutorials for curved crosshatch, I just need my A and my B for that. I'm going to start here. I'm going to come over, and I'm going to do my curves out. And then I'm going to come down, and I'm going to do my curves up, just like that. Okay. So, needle up. I think I'm going to do half inch. I'm going to go ahead, slide that over a little bit. So if I'm doing half inch measurement, then what I'm actually going to end up with is three quarters of an inch curved crosshatch. Okay. I'm careful I don't hop on that ruler, huh? No, Mr. Ritchie, I wouldn't do that. You don't want to retime it live? That might be a good tutorial right there. In fact, I'll just get rid of those guys, just like that. And let me take this guy off. And we won't even run into that trouble. Okay. Lock my stitches. Okay, keep my ruler lined up. 
curve. Follow those feather fronds. I'll go a little further than I think I need to go. Line up my ruler so it's actually a half of an inch in. Come back to my ruler. Come up. Follow those feather fronds. Go a little further than I think I need to go. Come down. And over. Down and in. I am in cruise mode right now. Come back. Slow cruise, but still cruise. I love my cruise mode. And if you have a different machine, again, on the Innovas, it's called start speed mode, and we have tutorials up for all that stuff. If you have uh, APQS, it's the uh, Glide, I believe. If you have um, Gamel, I think that is called Coast. I'm not sure. Um, if you have an A1, of course, it's called Cruise Mode. That's the, the machine I used when I actually fell in love with the Cruise Mode the first time. Over, down, come to there. Half inch in, good. Okay, so now we have our cross that way. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come up this way and I'm gonna repeat the same thing. So I'm gonna go up half of an inch, follow that down. There I'm at the ruler, over. Follow the feathers, go a little further than I think I need to go. Down, back, over, over, back, up, line that up. I have a little bit of sticky stuff on the back of this curved ruler. Go to the feather frond. Now I'm just going to climb up the side there. Go over, and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to go over, Travel that, up. It's always hard to know what to do. I always have to depend on the camera angle when we're filming. So I might stay over here normally if I'm quilting and go over, back, up, over, back. But since we're filming, I'm gonna go ahead and continue the way that I'm doing. Over. And my sandwich is only shifting a little bit because I took off my side clamp just to make it a little easy, especially since this was hanging off the edge of the quilt. Over. And I am using uh, the leader grip sides. That being said, a lot of people prefer the red snapper sides. I have both sets and I love both sets. Of course, I, I love Renee. Everybody knows that Renee's awesome. Renee Hadidin, she does the red snapper stuff. Um, but I also really like the leader grip, so I kind of use both. Okay, so now I have a nice curved cross hatch in here, and I think off camera, um, I might actually go in here, and what I'll do is I'll do some um, checkerboarding. And when I do checkerboarding, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use the blue pen. So I'm going to follow this diagonal line. I'm going to skip the first one, but follow that diagonal line. I'm going to put a little dot there, skip the next one diagonal, and then I'm going to put a little blue there, skip the next one, and then go to that one. Okay, and then skip the next one. You don't just want to do checkerboarding. What is checkerboarding? Checkerboarding is when you go in here and you fill in every other one with some sort of micro work. Um, let me see. We're going to go ahead. And I always like to go ahead and just pre-put a dot. That way I'm not going to get lost if one of the dogs comes up and bumps me and I talk to the dog for a minute. And when I go back to the quilt, I don't want to be lost. And once I actually put a little blue dot in there, then I can go ahead and I can go in there and do some filler. 
Okay, and for example, what filler would I use? I don't know. Whatever filler you like. Put my clamps back on. Thank you, sir. And my pin back in. And these just work like this. I find that I have to replace these guys. So again, let me do that over with a wide shot. These are the leader grips. They go under. This one goes on top. I start in the middle and then I do this. And now it's on there. I can take my clamp, put it right up on there. And now that's gonna hold it perfectly stable straight away. And again, I also love the uh, red snapper sides um, from Renee. Um, they both are wonderful in my opinion. Um, the other thing I was saying, because uh, a few of you have asked me about these leader grips, um, I have not wore out my red snapper sides that I got from Renee. Um, these, uh, the white thing that goes under here will last forever, probably. And then this part I find, and again, I remember we're doing hundreds of quilts a year. And so I find that I have to replace this about once a year. It's not that expensive. A set of replacement uh, plastic stuff up here, I think is like 10 bucks or something like that to replace them. But I love them. I love that it gives it a nice, nice stable. I hate using clamps and having it do this business. So that's one of the reasons I like to use that. Okay, so now I would go in here and I would just go ahead and do whatever type of microfill I would do and just follow that checkerboard to get that nice positive and negative space. And I'm not doing a ton of this. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. I'll come back and do this later off camera. But I'm gonna go right down and fill that in. Now what I would do next, once I finish that row, is I'm gonna travel down, follow those feather fronds to the next row and then follow that row all the way up. And then I would go over, find the next row that I have the mark in the middle, follow that all the way down, go to the next row, follow that all the way up, and that's going to give me, can you um, zoom in on that, micro work by chance? You can kind of see the micro work there. But that's going to give me that beautiful positive and negative. So that's what we're going to do, or all we're going to do on that. I'm going to go ahead, lock my stitches. Pull away, pop my thread. Now, the other thing is, I'm using blue right now. I This is my hand dye. I know my hand dye is, uh, has been washed ad nauseum, so I'm not going to have any issues with any bleed. So I know when I go to use my blue line eraser, um, then to take the blue out, I'm not going to get any weird residue on my hand dye because I know my hand dye. Um, so, but normally I would have used um, the bow and chalk for that rather than the blue marks to be gone, but I needed you to be able to see it. Okay, so now, next thing I wanna do is this. I am gonna reline this up and there is the dead center and Rich, maybe a split screen might work good. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, nah, I don't like that. Let's go back to, I think that camera over there. Yeah, they'll be able to see a little better with that. All right, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to extend that out. That's my A line. I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm going to put my B line, which is right here. Am I in? Am I in? Am I in? Sorry about the light there. Okay. A is the straight edge. No, you're fine. A is the straight edge. B, C, D, E. And what you do is you get your divided lines, which is what you're going to see now. So hopefully that'll make sense. So I line my B line up on my A line. That is going to come off here. Now what I do is I turn and I put my C on my A and my B line. So now I get my perfect 45 degree. 
And if I had a full circle in the center, like a medallion for a whole cloth, I would go ahead and mark that on both sides. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn it this way. Let me get the machine out of the way here, Mr. Ritchie. Going to line that up. And I don't need that line because that's off the quilt, so I'm good there. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line it up here, and I don't need that one. So it looks like I have all of my A, B, and C that I need there for my radiating lines. The battings that I'm using are Hobbs on the bottom, Hobbs 8020, and then um, I'm using Poly Down on the top, and that's going to give it a faux trapunto type look. Okay, so now. I'm going to take this and I'm going to reline that up in the center. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to D. So as I have this here, this just, I have my dot in the center. And again, remember, see the center? It's like an asterisk center. That always goes to the center dot that's in the middle of the area that you're dividing. So I'm going to line that up, that split that space. Okay, and I'm going to turn it in again. I would do this side and up here if I had a, if this were in the middle of the quilt. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to do the same thing, reline that up in the center, divide this. Now I'm going to turn it again, go to my D there, line it up in the center. That's got that, and you can kind of see, let's switch over to the other camera. You can see so far how I have my radiating lines. So I'm going to line that up again. Okay. And now I do have one more line there. So that's my D. And let me see. So that's going to be one, two, A, B, C, D. So I've done A, B, C, D. That's all I'm going to do for this one. I could keep going. And what I could do is do my E and divide this in half. I could do my F and divide all of those in half. So I'd have all of these wonderful radiating lines. It's a nice way to do like a inner radiating line um, type of medallion. Okay, so I have those done. Now what I want to do is I'm going to grab a ruler. And if you want to pop up that picture again, Mr. Ritchie. Thank you. Okay, so now look at the petals on the outside of that wreath. Do you see how you have a, um, a small arc that I filled with like a lotus feather, and then you have a big one that I left bare, and you have that uh, circumference going around the outer edge, and it, it extends out further and further and further and further and further. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so here is how we're going to do that. Now, if you pop back, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler, and I'm going to give myself one inch, two inch on every other line. So here I've got one inch, I marked it, and then two inch right there. And I'm going to skip this one and do the same thing here. One inch, two inch, skip this one, do the same thing here. One inch, two inch, skip this one. And now what I'm going to do is quilt this out. So I'm gonna grab my curve, I am going to use um, this right here as my pivot point. So my mark is here and here. One inch, two inch. I have a large curve. I'm going to lock my stitches on the alternate one that we didn't put measuring lines on.
And maybe zero in on that just a little bit, Mr. Ritchie, if you could. <laughs> maybe a little too much. On the website? It is going to be. So, um, yeah, so there you go. There's a whole story behind that. I've had that thing out for years, but I changed it a little bit. I added more, I added more divisions and less lines because we had a designer one and it was just too busy for my eye. And you know how much that, yeah, Rich has some if you want some at a discount, but we, we are going to have this, uh, designer two. Now, remember if you have the, um, the mystical designer for the classrooms, the drawing, uh, you have the small one. Or the old mystical designer does the old thing. Okay, so uh, zero out a little bit more for me. Zoom out. Perfect. A little bit in. I know. Okay. So a little dizziness is good. Okay, so now, ta-da, now I'm going to use my pole and bring that out so I don't get caught on my and because I didn't really leave myself enough back but it was the perfect backing for this piece that's why I'm using it back forth stop now I'm gonna turn the ruler so same thing this is here so now I'm going to the next line one two stop now what I'm going to do I would continue Normally with this all the way, so a nice curve up, curve down, curve up, curve down. And I'm using a real shallow um, curve here. Normally I might start at like two inches and four, or two inches and three inches, but I'm doing one and two. So this is a little more shallow, but you're getting the idea. And I wanted you to see um, for the filming how that works. So once I would finish and go all the way around the circle, if it were a full circle to here, then what I would do is go to the same spot and come back to my two inch, and that's going to give me that negative space. So I go one, two, three, stop, pivot the ruler, line it up. One, two, three, and now I'm going to go ahead and bring it back and continue all the way over. But you get the idea, hopefully, of how that continues all the way over. So now I'm there, I'm gonna slide up, and now you'll actually see me do it proper. One, two, three, stop. Pivot my curve. And if I wanted much more of a deeper curve, I would use a smaller curve. Now remember, I wanna eyeball about a quarter of an inch away because we have a quarter inch hopping foot. One, two, three, stop, pivot, turn, line it up. One, two, three, stop, pivot, turn, line it up. One, two, three, stop, pivot. I'm gonna guesstimate where that would be since that's the edge of the quilt. One, two, three. And now I'm gonna go ahead and come back and I'm gonna pretend that I know. One, two, three. I'm gonna come back here and now I'm gonna pivot. And again, I'm gonna go up to my measurement there. Do you see, we don't, we don't put our measurement we don't put a measurement on each line, that wouldn't work. Now, once I get these done, what'll happen is then I will go to the in-betweens and I'll bring those out a little further. So on these, what I might do is um, three inches, four inches. And so the petals are just gonna keep building up in between each one so you get that wonderful um, effect of like daisy petals. Oops, sorry about that. What's that number, the perfect number? F -f 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 what is that? 
like a sunflower has it. It's that that phrase everybody uses. Fibonacci, is it Fibonacci? Um, all right, everybody out there, the smart people, math people, what's that called? The perfect number. I think it's Fibonacci. Come down. Now that's going to make me crazy. One, two, three, and I already have this one done, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slide over because what I didn't do is, I'm going to go ahead, put that guy in there, two, three, back, I'm going to pivot that again. One, two, three, and now I'm simply just going to slide this away, and now, oops, let me lower this, get you a better visual here. Okay, so now these in-between lines, if you can still see them. No, Rich, I'm surprised you didn't know that because as math oriented as you are, Fibonacci, it's the perfect math, the perfect, the perfect number system. It, thanks, Jane. Yep, that's it. The golden rule of number. Yep. Yep. Everything has that's the perfect number in everything created, supposedly. Okay. So now you can see here we have these in between lines. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come out and I'm going to do, uh, say, three inches. One, two, three, and four. Skip one, which was the one we originally used, and do the same thing all the way around. One, two, three, and four. Do the same thing. One, two, three, and I'm going to use a marker marker because I'm on batting, and the further out I get, I want to be a little more perfect. You can't see it, but there we go. Okay, so now here is just a quickie here. So let me, I'm not actually going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through how I would do that. Three inches, four inches. Okay, right there. Okay, so I would use this, and the pivot point now is going to be this. So let's use this camera over here, Rich. Yeah. So the pivot point would now be this guy right here, and when I quilt that, I'm not going to come from here. I'm actually going to start here. I'm going to have my ruler lined up. I'm going to follow this up to where I have the ruler. I'm going to travel that ditch. That's why I do a thicker line. And so I'm going to go one, two, three, stop, pivot, line that up so that touches there and here. And I'm going to go one, two, three, but I'm only going to go down to the previous pedal. And then I'm going to follow the ditch around and repeat that same thing all the way around to get those pedals in between the pedals. Let's throw that picture up again. Okay, so look at that first row around the wreath, wreath shape. And then notice that the next one tucked behind it just go up to the wreath shape. And then the next ones behind that do the same thing. They go to the wreath shape. Now, here is something that I want you to see about that. Let's go back to me. Okay. I, on this piece, because this is short, I'm going to use this as my pivot point to come up and go up high. What you could do instead is use the tip of these and come over. Okay? Especially if it were taller. So if I extend these out like six inches, go back to the picture. Okay, do you see how long those are? So see, you can really play with this and come up with a ton of different 
ideas to go in there. And then, now back to me, and then it's just up to you, what am I going to put inside these spaces so you get that wonderful positive negative. And then what I'm going to do, if you want to widen that out or go to this other camera. Okay. So um, can that one be widened? Widen, widen, widen. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Pizza. All right. Okay. So, so now, once I extend this, I know, I know you said one piece, but it's so hard. It's been so long since I've had cheese. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this sun out to about here. And then, uh-oh, I, I don't even want to read the, the, the comments. Um, all right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide in here and I'm going to start a really cool um, border treatment that we're actually going to do a tutorial on, but it's going to be an actual tutorial rather than a live tutorial. So we're going to do some different steps. And then in the middle of this piece, I'm going to put some circles and ovals and all sorts of really cool things tucked into each other. So we'll do some really neat stuff and maybe use the inner shapes and do some winding in and out. Um, around those shapes. So that's going to be coming for regular tutorials, not the live stuff over the next few weeks. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that wonderful little impromptu. And um, anything that wasn't perfect about it, blame me and my, my inappropriate use of sugar today. So um, again, I hope everybody's doing okay out there. I know we're all going a little bit more stir crazy than normal. Um, we're kind of reaching the end of our our stuff, um, you know. But like I've been telling everybody, mask it or casket. Got to get your mask on when you're out in public, and you want to still isolate a little bit more. We're seeing the rising, people, the 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 stuff is rising in other areas, um, and I know a lot of people don't feel that that's true. Um, as an ex healthcare ex nurse, I will say, you know, you got to take care of yourself, and um, there's a lot of validity to what's going on out there. So definitely pay attention. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to do questions real quick. Uh, thank you for this video. Thank you, Norma. Thank you for showing up. I have never used the poly batting, but I really like the effect. Yeah, the poly batting is wonderful. I love the poly down from Hobbs. That's really nice. Now, my area, we use mostly uh, Hobbs, most of our long armors. What we found is a lot of the folks in our area, they're just not going to pay for the Dream, right, because it's a little more expensive. I love Dream batting. I love Hobbs batting. Um, but a lot of our people, they're just not going to pay for the Dream. And Hobbs is a nice little less price, and that poly down is wonderful. And I have quilts that are... 18, 19 years old that I quilted years ago with the poly down and the um, Hobbs 8020. Um, and before somebody asks, the reason I'm using two battings is because this is going to hang on a wall uh, for the winter. And so therefore, I wanted to have the 8020 towards the back to stabilize it so it hangs straight. And then the um, poly down is for the fluff so that you can see the, the fancy quilting on the piece. Um, so there we go. Uh, Yeah, Andrea, we'll be back. I promise you. Um, this is not going to go away. Life has changed for a lot of us. I think online is kind of going to be the way of the future, and that's just the way it is. And so we will be back, and I will have tutorials, and they'll be cleaner. You know, live, you know, you never know. Um, you can't edit things out. So there we go. Um, and Mary, it's always good to see you. Thank you. And I really appreciate it. Um, Marilyn? Uh, do you have to adjust the height of the hopping foot for the double batting? No, I don't. So again, back to that. If you go back, I think, to our first live or second live, check out the lives if you haven't done them. There's a lot of good information on there. Um, but number one, I am a one to two business card guy, period. I am not a dime. I am not anything. And I, the only time I've ever had to change my hopping foot height are on poorly-ish pieced um, t-shirt quilts where they were thick and there were a lot of seams 
um, and on upholstery, heavy upholstery fabric or on leather, then I might end up raising it up to a dime. But I double and triple bat all the time and I am one to two business cards. That's it. And I never have any trouble with scooching or anything like that. And that's for my Innova as well as my handy quilters. Um, as well as my A1s when I had the A1, same thing with my APQS when I had the APQS, same thing when I had the older Gamel. Um, so I've always used uh, one business card typically, but sometimes you know two business cards is what you end up with. And I have never had an issue. I don't have to raise and lower. Um, so there we go. Hey Bev, love my red snappers. Can I? Just use a couple of cut down pieces to make the leader grips. No, because it's different. Hold that thought. Nope, I don't need a standby screen. Is this where I'm supposed to sing a song or something? Sing, sing, Rich, sing. Uh, no. Make magic happen. Okay, there we go. I looked better that way. Okay, so, so here are the side as you can see, the red snappers. Now, typically the red snappers for the leader has that pole, so these are completely different. And these open up. And Renee Hadidin, uh, Quilts on the Corner, is that uh, are the correct? Quilts on the Corner has a wonderful tutorial on how to use these properly. But this opens up, can you squeeze in with that camera? No, okay, so these open up. Yeah, let's go to the side one. This opens up and then it just snaps down. Okay, so it closes on the side as opposed to the other red snapper gig. Okay, does that make sense? So that's how these work. Um, um, and th they're wonderful. They work great. So I'm just waiting. He had to get a delivery at the door. So I'll be over here and uh, wait for him to come back. Okay, and this snaps down. Again, I like them both. I use the leader grips. I use Renee's stuff. Um, they're both really, really good. Okay, so if you want to get me on the straight ahead camera, Mr. Ritchie. Is that Mr. Green Jeans? Oh my gosh, get out of here. All right, so gosh. that's not going to be the special guest for next week. So even though that would be great, that's Patrick. A lot of you know Patrick. So um, anyways, other questions? Uh, sing Rich, sing. Yeah, actually, he's got a great voice uh, when he's not yelling at me. Uh, love the live question. The last double bat I used had a little issue with some puckers on the back. How to prevent that? Puckers on the back, puckers on the back, puckers on the back of the backing or puckers from the batting? One thing I'll say is this. Whenever I double bat, so if let's say I, I'm double batting this guy right here on this quilt right here, um, I think I think we're okay with this camera. Let's say I rolled this now. I've got the double bat. I've just rolled the quilt forward, and of course the underneath batting has some puckers right on the bottom. That's when I go ahead and I use my batting excess. And most machines now have it. And then I simply flip. Sorry. I flip my top batting up and over. And then I have my Hobbs 8020. And I straighten and smooth that out. And I check under, make sure there's no tucks. And then I pull that down. Now, if, if, I think that's what you meant. But if I'm wrong, and what you meant was you were getting puckers on the backing of the quilt, then what I would say is your backing just needs to be a little more taut, but not tortured, right? Um, so that's, that's how I do it. Um, but I do find that what will happen is a lot of people will go ahead and roll if they double or triple bat and they don't smooth out that batting. You got to smooth out that bottom batting every time you roll that quilt. So, 
Okay, I will definitely see you in your September at the tag. Thank you, Mary. We'll be here and we'll be safe and it'll all be good. Um, toots. How do I get the toots? Um, they're going to be up on YouTube. So uh, you don't have to do anything. If you want to go sign a news, is a newsletter? Yes, yeah, subscribe to YouTube. Go on, just do a YouTube thing. I mean, we're, we're not going to send you a bunch of junk. And we send out an email with each new toot, and I announce it on my um, Quilters Apothecary Facebook page. Um, and if you're my friend on Facebook, then I announce it there that we've got a toot coming out. Um, if you have friend requested me on YouTube and you haven't gotten a response, it's not because I don't want you as my friend on my personal page. It's typically that I've, I've topped out. And so I always have to wait until people leave before I can add new friends. So that's kind of what happens there. But Quilters Apothecary, just go and like Quilters Apothecary and you'll always get a notice. I uh, love my red. Yeah, a lot, Mary, I get it. A lot of people have trouble with the leader grips because um, they're a little hard if you have arthritis. And I'm surprised I, I don't have trouble. But they can be a little hard when they're brand new to snap them on. So I totally get it. Yep, I hear that a lot. Uh, puckers on the backing. Yes, yeah, so what's happening then is you simply need, that has nothing to do with your double bat, just so you know. What that has to do with is you just need to pull the sides a little more taut. And I'll tell you what, when you roll that backing up onto that back roller, what I have found, uh, which has completely changed everything, is that I will, I will do a light uh, mist with my little sprayer as I'm rolling that up. And no, it doesn't get moldy or anything like that. I've never had an issue with any of that. Um, even, and trust me, I have quilts that are on the machine for two and three months sometimes. Um, because we have eight machines with quilts on them. So just know that I think what's I think what's happening for you is it's not taut enough. I always say you want it uh, to be able to stick your finger up through the quilt sandwich and you only want to be able to grab almost to the first knuckle. You don't want to grab to the first knuckle. A lot of people want to grab their fist. That's too loose. You're going to get tucks. And so I just grab just the tip of my finger and then I know that everything's tight enough. If I can't grab my tip, it's too tight and I'm distorting fabric. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so Parker's on the batting. Say goodbye. Good night. Is that what I need to say? He says, get out of here. Turn the grill on. All right, everybody. Know you're loved. Thank you again for joining us. Next week, we will see you with our special guest, God willing, and the Greek don't rise. And have a wonderful week. Be safe. And as always, just like they say on the airplane, take care of yourself first so that you can take care of the others. All right. See you down the road. <laughs>